Uh, when did you first start training with a knife? How old were you? My knife training started at maybe at 18 years old. Why did you pick exactly a knife? Uh, it was part of the system of Kali that I was learning from Dan and Asanto. So uh, I never intended to get into the knife. It was just part of the training. So I just liked it and continued and got further in involved. So, would you mind telling, uh, in your opinion, what is the basis of martial arts, of this knife? Oh, oh God, that's a hard question. I would think uh, knowing where you're at in relation to your opponent, it's, it's so very important that you are not left vulnerable to vulnerable the position. You must be able to be able to move and be agile, otherwise you will be cut. Would you mind telling, do you think there is a certain logical model of a work with the knife? But I would say that a lot of the logic of the knife is it makes everyone more equal. If, if two people <coughs> had to confront each other with a knife, it doesn't matter if one person is 100 pounds and the other person is 100 pounds. It is an equalizer because the knife is dangerous in one's hands. It can be dangerous in a child's hand or an adult's hand. So I don't know if you understand this term, but it levels everything. How long have you been teaching this uh, knife technique? I started with Dan and Asanto at age 18. And I would say within maybe three years I was teaching, uh, I started to teach. And I'm, I'm going to be 53 now, so uh, many, many years, uh, you know, probably 30 years. Would you mind please telling, how do you start teaching one? How did I start teaching? I, I, when I, I lived in Chicago, I started very young age in um, another martial art, not, not with Dan Asanto. I, I, I started the martial art at six years old and um, judo, karate, and uh, when I found Dan and Asanto, I stayed with him for, uh, I started to train with him in, in, I believe it was 1982, and uh, within a couple of years, he gave me permission to start teaching, and I, I taught in Chicago until 1992, then I moved to California. Would you mind telling if there is a psychological preparation of a person before that he can start training with a knife? I don't know if psychological training at first. Well, what we do is we bring the student. I usually teach uh, the stick first. And then, then I start to show them the concepts of knife fighting. Um, I think more of the psychological training comes when they start to begin to spar with the knife. What type of system of uh, knife training do you adhere to? I mean, there are Filipino system, Italian one, Spanish system. What do you prefer? I, 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 for me, I like the Filipino systems. <clears throat> I, I train in um, several systems in the Filipino martial arts. I, I've seen, I, I've gotten to train in many other systems, Chinese, uh, Actually, uh, the Bando, Bando system uh, in, from Bur Burma. Um, I train in a lot of systems, but for me, I like the Filipino best. Uh, what do you think is the difference between the systems? The Italian one, Filipino one, Spanish one? Oh, there's a lot of difference. Uh, you know, I, I, for me, I, I, I think that the Filipino systems that I know are are very very uh, very full. It, it's uh, I think they they've researched every what I've seen every possible way you could think of being confronted by a knife or using a knife. And not to say that the others aren't. I I just think that they're more established. And from what I've seen, there it has been much more progressive. What are the certain stages 
of knife fighting that someone needs to, needs to master in order to become a professional in this art? I, I think that, I mean, first off, before someone becomes, it's hard to say master. I don't consider myself a master. Um, you know, you're always learning. You're all, you know, to master, in my mind, to master something means you know every single thing about it. And to this day, I still train and I still see new things. Uh, to become proficient, uh, just time and dedication, and to try to look at the knife with real eyes, meaning it's not just technique, but can you execute the technique success, uh, successfully? You know, and, and nothing is ever 100%, but to understand it, to understand what might happen if it doesn't execute correctly and where to go from there. Would you mind uh, sharing the methodology that you teach to your students in order to master the knife fighting? The methodology that I teach is to first, uh, I think when you first start martial art, you have a preconceived idea on how it will be. I try to show my students how dangerous the knife will be and show how easily that someone could lose their life with it. Mm -hmm. So with this mindset, then you, then you take them into technique and you show them this is just technique, it's not real, but it teaches you how to move with the knife and what may happen. Then you just progress further and make it more difficult for them to make the technique work for them. And just you just keep repeating this process over and over and over until until they start to get a higher level of success in defending themselves. Would you mind sharing, please, the tactic of a work with a knife? Okay, uh, if, if I'll take defending first. If I'm defending myself against the knife, the first thing I look for is a way out. I will <laughs> run if I have to. Mm -hmm. The knife is very dangerous. It's very easy to die. The only time I will defend myself is when there is no escape. Uh, so the, one of the first things I will do is if, if a person is holding a knife, I would not let myself get very close to him. I would try to make distance, stay away. If, they, uh, if I'm aware, I should never let them approach me if they already have the knife in the hand. If they went for it, I would try to stop them before they could get their hands on the knife to control them. That's the time that maybe a disarm can occur is before the knife is out and he's swinging it. Once the knife is being uh, you know, very, very fast and moving at you, it's very difficult to get the knife out of someone's hands. In your opinion, why today there are so many people that are willing to teach this knife fighting? I mean, with this knife fighting technique. But when a real life situation comes up in their life, they run away. So why this happens? Well, I think sport is sport. It's not life or death. With the real knife, it's very easy to lose your life. But um, I think that's the main reason and the difference in mentality. What actually moved, what actually pushed you to start uh, working with a knife in a professional way? Well, uh, I really 
realize uh, that the older I get, I'm an old man now, <laughs> the, the older I get, the less I, I want to roll around and fight someone on the ground. So I, I think to protect myself, I should become more proficient with the knife. And also, if uh, in America, everybody carries a knife. Almost everyone you can see in their pocket, they have a knife. So it's a, a very prevalent in our society. So I want to make sure I feel safe against someone who might have a knife. How do you think those people that come and ask you to teach them, why do, you, do they come to you? Well, for many reasons. I try to be very um, careful on who I teach. Even in seminar, if I feel someone might be doing bad things with a knife, I don't show too much. But uh, I have many students from uh, many places. Some have already been attacked with a knife and they feel they need to feel more safe against it. Other people feel they're very small and not good fighters, so they think a knife would be a good equalizer. Ron, would you mind please telling uh, about your teacher, about your instructor, Dan Inosanto? Uh, uh, yesterday was his birthday. He turned 80 years old. Okay, well, he's still, he's still very, very active, even at age 80. He is, uh, I, I, in my, my martial art life, I've seen many, many people with a lot of knowledge in knife and sword. And to this date, I've never met anyone with more knowledge than him and the way he's able to teach it. I think he's the best. I can speak all day about him. What was the most significant thing that he actually taught you? So don't criticize, just look and learn, and it, it, everything you get is an extra, extra tool for you to use. Uh, Ron, uh, when you teach someone, uh, can you please describe the way you do it by stages? For example, the first stage is a work with feet, the second one is the other thing. Okay, uh, the first stage is always making them realize how dangerous a knife is. Uh, sometimes in class, we will put a, um, a piece of meat up and we will literally cut the meat and show them because a lot of people really don't realize. Uh, I mean, I think they think of when they cook food and they have to cut through the, the meat that it's going to be a lot different when someone swings at you very hard and the way it will open. Um, so, I don't want to scare people too much, but I make them realize that this could be their life. So, with, with that in their eyes and then realizing how dangerous it is, then I will go into uh, how to move, how to avoid being in front of the knife, how to just have a common sense of a person has a knife in their waist, beware. The second level that I go to is... Uh, it's just some very slow training. I, I, I treat it like uh, American baseball. If you have your five-year-old son in front of you, you're not going to take the ball and throw it real fast. You'll go slow, just so to give them a chance to realize, oh, my body should be here. I should move this way. And if there's error, they have time to adjust. OK, then, then after they become aware of where they're at, I make more pressure and, and make it more difficult for them to react. Um, I always, uh, the way Dan Anasanto taught me was I give about 70% to 80% success for the student and then I make them fail 20%. And then the better they get, I try to make it more difficult. Um, to always, that way you always challenge the student. If you give them 100% success all the time, I don't feel that they're really learning. So you must put enough pressure to make it a little bit difficult, but to show them that they are being successful. Okay, and then in, uh, to me, the advanced level or instructor level is uh, just to spar, to make it uh, a challenge between both instructor and student. As an instructor, I want to uh, continue to
to learn. So I like to be in front of the student with the same challenge because, I mean, many times I get cut, uh, you know, in, in training. And I realize if it was real, I would die. So I want to be able to keep myself um, like the knife. I want to keep sharp. So you mean that the training with a knife has no age limitations? No, none. If you think about it, uh, a six-year-old boy can be deadly and an 80-year-old man can still be very deadly with a knife. Uh, one other area that I, I do, I try to look at every area, like, like maybe if you're on the ground and you must fight, if they're on top of you with the knife, or if they're underneath you and they have the knife and you're on top. It's all a dangerous areas. I think that even if you're a child or, or, or a woman or an elderly man, it's very easy to go to the ground with the knife, so you must know what to do while on the ground. The number one thing with the knife is always awareness. So I, from the first class to the very last class, no matter what the level of student, I try to make an escape before you have to fight with it. You know, and even if it, the escape is pleading, oh, please don't kill me, I will do anything I can to not get into a knife fight. What type of knives do you use in your training? Oh, I use everything. For, uh, uh, with beginner students, we usually use either a short stick or like plastic knives that don't look as aggressive. As the, the training progresses, I move to aluminum knives. Then we move to actually a real knife, but with no, you know, we make the edge dull, so, but it still has a different feel and you get a different mentality when you see that real knife being swung at you. Do you think there is a difference of work, um, let's say, with a dagger and with a Navaja? Any size. I believe that, uh, obviously, the size is much more dangerous. Uh, a smaller knife, if you're swinging it, and if, um, sometimes a small blade won't hit. My hand will hit more than the blade will hit the, the arm. It, it, it's, how can I explain? Okay, if my arm is still, it is very easy to cut. But if the person is moving their hands and you're trying to cut, you might hit uh, arm to arm, not blade to arm. But like a Navaja or bigger blades, it's very easy to get the blade onto the flesh. If it's the knife, this is aluminum. But if it's a short knife, if you're fighting, sometimes if you move, sometimes it will hit, then cut, mm -hmm. right? Or it, it, it will hit, the, if the movie comes hit, hit, then cut. Mm -hmm. If you have the bigger blade, it's much easier to touch with, with the blade. So like a Navaja, it's larger blade, I think much easier to employ it or to make it work for you than a small blade. And I also teach the grips, the fencing grip, or the reverse grip. Uh, I, for me, I prefer fencing grip. Uh, I feel that it, it, uh, I want the knife to extend in front of me more than behind me, and I have to give the forearm more where I have a better chance of being cut if I, if I have it in the reverse grip. Uh, do I understand uh, correctly? Depending on the length of the blade, one chooses the distance. The blade will, will change my attitude very, very much. Especially if, it, if it's... If I have a knife and my opponent has a knife, if he has a larger blade, I will treat it much different than if I had a larger blade. You mm -hmm. know? But to me, it's always more fun to have the bigger blade. Do I understand correctly that after having uh, studied several different systems, you have came up with your own? Uh, I, I teach two main systems that I like. I train, I train in many martial arts systems, but for me, the two I like is in a Santo system and La Meco Escrima. I, I teach both of those, those systems together. Uh, would you mind sharing what's the difference between these two s systems? Uh, the the Inosanto system is, I feel, very technical, very good. Uh, it teaches me more of what to do if someone were to, to pull a knife out and attack me. Uh, the Lamego system.
system, I like a lot because uh, it's more sparring, more more aggressive, more more what we call dueling, knife on knife, like a duel. Do you know this word? Uh, would you mind uh, naming if there are uh, certain advantages of each system? They both, I think they both complement each other very well. Uh, the, the, the techniques that I've learned from Dan and Asanto, I think are, are amazing, very good. Uh, I like to put it into the Lameco Screma because it forces me to have to to make it work against someone who is not cooperating. That's what I like the two together. I think they complement each other very well. Uh, do you think there is a future for a knife in the 21st century? Oh, I do. I think that the world, if you look at the world right now, how crazy it is with weapons, with terrorism, with everything else, I think that more and more uh, 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 firearms like guns, rifles will become more illegal, more restricted, and I think that knives are more prevalent, and I think more people will be carrying them in the future. So I think that you should learn to defend yourself against one. What would you advise to people that are new to knife and that are planning to start um, studying the knife techniques? Uh, I would advise them to make sure whoever they're training with is legitimate. Many people claim now that they are a master of whatever systems and they are unbeatable and all these amazing claims. I would make sure that, first off, that they are always good, uh, good people because it's a very dangerous thing with a knife. You want to make sure you're safe, even from the people that are teaching you. And I would make sure that they have good morals. You know, because again, it's a very dangerous weapon. What would be the criteria that you can distinguish one to be a, a good master? I think that maybe just research. I think the internet is a very good place to start. If they live in your community, ask other people, maybe ask their students, get to know their students and look at them and see what kind of people they are. And, and you'll see if it's a good person, if it's a good match for you. You mean that there are no certain criteria? The criteria would be I would want to know the history of the person. I would want to know their system and what they're about, how long they train, who they train, what their philosophy is. Does it match my philosophy of what I want to learn? Uh, in the beginning, you have mentioned that you like Filipino uh, knife martial arts system. Would you mind uh, sharing the traditions of Filipino knife fighting system? Uh, when Spain ruled the Philippines, there, there were uh, a lot of fighting between Filipinos. And the reason being is there are over 7,000 islands that make up the Philippines. With at least three tribes per island, that makes 21,000 different versions of Kali, Escrima, Arnis. And they always didn't get along, so there was a lot of tribal fighting. So they would be incarcerated as political prisoners by Spain. And there was a lot of fighting in the, in the prisons and the jails. And I think the, the knife fighting evolved a lot because of this. In the Philippines, I think they became very proficient with it because it was part of their everyday life, everyone. You have to think of this. If uh, one tribe against another tribe and they're going to invade it, everyone must fight so everyone must have that knowledge so i think it, it, it's almost as much as a civilized society picking up a pen and learning how to use it to write they had to pick up the knife and use it to learn how to survive and i think that's why it's such a progressive martial arts because so many people depended on it for their survival that they became very good with it and made good a good martial art out of it um, you know, it, it's it's just, it's still there and it's still being used quite frequently in the Philippines. Um, you know, the south, uh, what, what, uh, the, south, uh, the south of the Philippines, southern Philippines, is still not conquered any other under any rule. It's still very 
a still very a wide use system. So what I mean is, a lot of martial arts become very domesticated, very civilized. You know, they have the school and it teaches, and it's very, very uh, uh, organized. Where in the Philippines, it's still used. You still can die tomorrow very easily there. So they still keep very active and keep very, very, very sharp precision training to stay formidable. Do you teach this actual very traditional Filipino system to your students? I do. I try to teach it. Uh, I, I try to separate the systems and show them this is from Inesanto, but this is from John Lacasa, this is from the Illustrissimo system, this is the Lameco system. I try to show each system and so they know I want to give the credit to each person who deserves the credit for teaching me. Yeah, there is, uh, in, in the art of, uh, they call Bando, it's uh, Dr. Mungji. He teach me. Um, you know, I have many, many influences in Filipino martial arts, or just in knife fighting, not all Filipino either. But I try to, if I show a technique, and if it's from that martial arts system, I try to give that instructor credit. What is the most important thing for a person who takes a knife in his hands? Oh, very easy. Uh, it's very big responsibility. It's like having a loaded gun. You, you must respect life and you must know that this knife can easily end someone's life. So you, you try to have this in your mind, the responsibility that's laid out by giving somebody a weapon like that. So if we're here, I'm also giving the vitals much more. You see it? Because he's getting more of the interior. I want the exterior. To, I don't want anything to take it, but if it's gonna get touched, I'd rather it get touched here than here. Obviously makes sense. Okay, so he's here. Once I go here, I wanna soften. First one is here, one, and then this is technique two, the way we look at it. Technique three is gonna be my hand. Maybe I went to grab it and he didn't give it to me because he's not gonna let me. I wanna to go to this position and that's gonna be our number three.